Welcome back to our studio in Halle. Uh, today, the, the next presentation will be about The Caribals, a moving exhibition. The speaker, Saad Ginoy, is managing his local makerspace called Salvage Garden in Singapore. He considers himself a geek and maker and will talk about the moving exhibition today. Thanks again, and sorry about all of this. Um, uh, it's become the necessary dance that we have to do with all the remote connections and multiple streams and so on. Um, but thank you again for the intro. And I'm really happy to be with you guys in spite of all of the uh, distances and the not really happening in the physical space, um, which is kind of what I'd like to talk about uh, with you a little bit. and. Um, before I get into it, let me do a little bit of an intro. Um, my name is Saad, and I'm uh, based in Singapore normally. Um, I set up little maker spaces, and I'm all about um, trying to apply tech for good. And I, I volunteer with uh, Engineering Good, which is a nonprofit charity based in Singapore, and we work with persons with disabilities. I'm here today to try and talk to you, to share with you a little bit about what we've been doing uh, in combination with uh, partners from around the world through a program called Carables. And if you've read the, the little description of, of the talk, you'll probably be wondering why all of the people mentioned there aren't here. And it's kind of uh, what this is all about. Uh, the, um, they weren't able to join me in conversation uh, for various uh, COVID-related safe distancing, um, travel-related issues. Um, Ricardo is in, in between places, Geraldine is also in between places, and so is Fadia, and I'm actually quite fortunate to be able to uh, jump in and share with you what we have. Um, so I'm going to keep it nice and, 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 and informal and brief, um, but uh, for my co-presenters, I hope that continued health and that they're, they have safe travels and I hope to see them again soon. All right, so um, if I'm able to, if you're able to see my uh, screen, I'd like to show you around a little virtual space that we've created. Um, I mean, carables.org is the project and you'll find more about carables on the website and so on. But um, because of the restrictions that we're all under uh, around the world, uh, having a physical interaction is, you know, like CCC, uh, next to impossible right now, and it makes perfect sense. Uh, it, uh, we need to put health and safety first. So the virtual exhibition uh, that I'm about to show you is created in a two-dimensional world on a platform called Gather Town, uh, which is not unlike the 2D world that RC3 also has. Um, it's actually inspired by uh, last year's CCC um, and the sort of interactions that we saw uh, while people were able to sort of run into each other and have a spontaneous conversation uh, just by the fact that they were in that physical, that virtual space and a moment in time. Uh, so the idea of having that virtual space seems a little bit um, strange um, because, you know, it's all on the screen. Uh, so why bother, right? But I think the more you try this out, the more uh, you uh, move around in this in this two-dimensional environment, you realize that even though there's a slight difference between um, having a little character running around, um, it really makes a huge impact. So that's kind of what um, we were inspired by. And uh, we create a little two-dimensional space here. Uh, and we call this the um, Caribou's International Park. And uh, it has uh, various um, uh, instances or little jump off points um, for different Caribals moving exhibitions. And I'll show you one of them in particular, the one that um, I've been facilitating in Singapore, um, was it? Yeah, late last year. And you'll see that in a second. Um, but if uh, you'll, I'm going to just show you a little video uh, to sort of situate you uh, as to where uh, what these caribals 
uh, moving exhibitions are a bit like. And um, the video might be a little bit choppy because of the screen share, uh, but that's okay. Um, it, there, there is no text really. This is just a bit of music. So that's what the the sort of intro video, and you will see this um, right in the middle of this crossroads. So when you join the virtual space later on, I'll share with you the link. Um, you'll be able to sort of orient yourself um, uh, by you know looking at the video. And um, I'm hoping that what you what you caught in that video are little snippets of the various exhibitions that have taken place around the world. Um, I was the one sort of facilitating, curating the exhibition in Singapore, um, and it, bring, it gave us an opportunity to take this um, EU Horizon 2020 funded project, which is Carables, um, and invite other local partners within Singapore to come forward with similar ideas. And just to give you a little brief thing there, uh, it, it's about assistive technology. So things that are either 3D printable or modified or custom made that cater to persons with disabilities or try to address a need that has to do with persons with disabilities. So those are the sorts of examples of objects, physical or otherwise, um, that we put together at these exhibitions. So let's take a quick um, uh, look at Singapore. So all you have to do is sort of you know walk around to this portal and once you get there, uh, you get a little instruction that says, you know, hit the enter key to continue, and it will transport you to uh, another virtual space, which is also built on uh, Gather Town. So I'm going to switch off this little video here, and we can just use the moving around virtual space. Um, so all of these spaces were created by volunteers and um, super uh, enthusiastic interns. So they are a work in progress. Uh, but you can get a sense of what they're all about. So here we are at uh, a little tiny little shop house. If you're familiar with Singapore, you'll know what shop houses are. It's basically a shop in the downstairs area and a house upstairs traditionally. Um, so this has been converted into an office and it's rather narrow. Um, so the 2D space is created sort of to resemble what it would feel like if you were in the physical space uh, in and around Singapore. Um, so I'm just going to walk you through the space and show you all of the things that we have on display here. Um, the exhibition was late last year and um, with some really nice fun people. Some of these are local partners. And so that's the little poster at the entrance. This is our little lobby area. Um, it's a courtyard that's open to, to the air where we you know, sit outside and um, talk about things and smoke cigarettes and things like that. Um, once you get in, it's a tiny little space um, where you'll see a whole bunch of laptops arranged along, along the side. Uh, and, you know, it's, there's a lot more in, actual, uh, in the actual space. Um, and to tell you a little more about why we've got so many laptops, here's a little info video uh, to give you an overview of what engineering good is and why we do what we do. So I hope this comes across okay. If not, you know, there will be, I'll, I'll paste the link in the chat 
uh, or something similar? When we started the CAC initiative, the Computers Against COVID initiative, we actually initially thought we'll just refurbish 24 laptops and pass it on to the beneficiaries and then, you know, watch Netflix and play PlayStation for another two months. So far, we've been able to give out about five and a half thousand laptops. We work with more than 200 social service organizations or charities and uh, through them, we've given out all of these five and a half thousand laptops. Hi, I'm Johan. I am the Executive Director for Engineering Good. We are a Singaporean charity who started out in 2014 working with persons with disabilities to enable their inclusivity in daily life. We grew in 2020 where as a cause of the pandemic, we started a new initiative to refurbish and donate laptops to people who need them. And now we are working uh, on new initiatives that have come our way because of our work in assistive technology and our work in digital inclusion. So for example, our next big initiative is our IT troubleshooting community framework where we will train volunteers to help troubleshoot the laptops and the digital devices of people in need. Together with our growth in digital inclusion, we also have grown our initial work, which was uh, working with persons with disabilities. Our Tech for Good, for example, grew from 80 odd participants to 150 participants this year. We've grown from only working with the six special schools to the 200 charities in Singapore that work for and with persons with disabilities. So because of the impact that we continue to make, and the impact that we are requested to make by our various social service organizations, we have an internal conscience that, that, that makes us want to do more and help more. And because of that, engineering good is growing in leaps and bounds. We got our first office in Little India in September 2020. And being a small team of uh, three, four people, we thought this was all, all we needed, right? A nice little shop house next to the MRT so that the volunteers can come in. Uh, however, because of the growth in the initiatives that we want to do, uh, we are hiring more and more people. We now stand at eight full-timers and we're hiring another five more. That together with the uh, rolling bunch of interns and the part-timers and, and all the volunteers that we have, it's making this space a bit congested. So we actually are moving to a bigger space, an industrial estate where we have about 2,700 square feet and we can uh, then run more workshops and more programs and also train the digital inclusion efforts that we'll be doing. We would like to ask for your support in providing us with more devices to refurbish to pass on to uh, the people who need them. We ask for your support to come and help volunteer. As Engineering Good, we don't only need engineering volunteers, we need volunteers of all types. We need people to work at comms, we need people to help us with our website design, our accounting, just like any other organisation. So please, if you have the time and want to give more of yourself, come and join Engineering Good. So we hope you can support Engineering Good by donating to our cause and helping us grow so we can help more and more people. Okay, so it's a bit of a background um, of the organization that I've been volunteering with um, that you heard from Johan, he's our um, uh, the executive director and he puts in a lot of his heart into the work that we do. And it's all about um, reaching out to those who, who are in need and in the last two years during the pandemic, uh, we found ourselves responding to uh, the call for uh, addressing the digital divide through refurbishing laptops. Although that is not exactly what Engineering Good used to do. It, it was all about um, uh, assistive tech. Um, and so now that we've handled that campaign, uh, it, it's um, because of the volunteers and the sort of devices that we've had, um, we were able to continue this campaign way beyond we initially thought. Um, we're coming on to now, I think, close to 6,000 laptops in the last two years that have gone to families that um, don't have access or um, are, are, are unable to work from home and study from home at the same time. So um, in sort of combination with this laptop, uh, Computers Against COVID, as we like to call it, campaign, um, we've also now been able to 
uh, re-energize uh, our assistive tech work. And those are the uh, exhibits that we have on display here as part of the Carables exhibition. So um, we do have a few more videos, but I'm not going to uh, bore you with those. I think um, as you explore the space uh, by yourself, you'll be able to uh, view those without any lag and delay. So let me just walk you through the upstairs area. So here we've come up to the top floor of uh, the space and at the back, uh, you'll see there's a little corner that's been designated the salvage garden um, and it's a sort of reference to salvage garden. Uh, we do have a sort of a, a vague, uh, I mean there's a broad range of volunteers that would that that spend time at engineering good but with the reference to salvage garden I think you understand what demographic we're working with um, and that's kind of how the 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 name came about, but the idea was that we would salvage as many of these devices that were not working uh, into working devices and then send them out to the families that need them the most. Um, and this is work that, uh, so this is the, the, the corner that um, is a little maker space um, and you know, like most maker spaces, um, it tends to be appropriately messy. Uh, you could probably also see in the, in the corner there we have our supervisor uh, stick stuck to the window. Um, she's our most furry volunteer and she just wandered in while we were uh, refurbishing laptops and she wasn't being cared for because everybody was in lockdown and uh, she didn't have the usual source of food which was uh, leftovers from uh, cafes and restaurants. Uh, so she wandered in from the street and uh, she's been with us ever since sort of keeping an eye on things when nobody is there. Um, garden is a uh, maker space with a cat. Um, she does also keep an eye on uh, activities and I'd like to show you that but before I show you some of the uh, current projects let's have a look at uh, what's on display here. So each of these tables has um, a sort of like a representation of uh, what was displayed in the actual physical um, exhibition. So if you walk up to it and hit X, you'll be able to see uh, a photograph um, or a video or a series of photographs and videos that um, um, show you the object. So this in, uh, in, in, is a good example of one of the carables. Um, it was designed uh, by uh, an Italian uh, consortium member and they uh, went on to have a successful Kickstarter program around commercialization of this idea. But the open source um, uh, files and the models do exist. So you're able to just download and 3D print um, an, uh, if, uh, um, uh, a non-commercial version of this uh, to try out for yourself. And of course, you know, being 3D printable, it allows for customization and personalization. Uh, and this particular object is designed for children with um, fine motor control difficulties that are uh, instead of being able to hold a, a pencil with their index finger and their thumb, uh, you have a sort of a wearable ring that goes on to multiple fingers and they're able to hold their pens and, uh, and pencils and um, draw on, on paper. Um, if you look at uh, the little poster at the end, uh, I think that'll give us a little bit more of a detailed view of what this is all about. And you know, just like an exhibition, um, you have uh, links to uh, where it's available and how you can get involved if you choose to do so. So that's Glifo. Let's have a look at uh, uh, the next day, this particular one is a personal favorite of mine. I mean, this is engineering goods, um, terrible if you like, and it uh, is been doing ever since we started uh, as an organization. We make these assistive switches, which are uh, 3D printable and are incredibly easy to lightweight and easy to adapt to uh, specific circumstances. So if you have a mobility issue, say you are uh, wheelchair bound and you have uh, to install switches or um, access control mechanisms um, around your wheelchair, 
then having it be as uh, lightweight as, and uh, modular as possible is a good idea. So um, these um, switches really help. And we've been using them in various ways. In particular, uh, we've been plugging them into toys um, as part of our hack a toy workshop where we teach um, caregivers and um, uh, cognitive behavioral therapists how to make these switches themselves. So the um, um, idea behind what engineering good does is not just create the devices, but uh, to engage the primary caregivers as well as the end users as much as humanly possible and share the skills behind uh, making um, the idea of thinking out of the box and looking at what your specific needs are and repurposing things um, that you have around you in order to create something new. Um, this is another example of uh, a very interesting invention. This was contributed by uh, SG Enable, which is a local Singapore-based uh, organization uh, that has a physical uh, library for assistive tech from uh, commercial examples. Engineering good tends to focus on sort of like the low cost alternative to what's available in the marketplace. Uh, but if you uh, are in Singapore and you want to have access to um, assistive tech devices just to get a feel for what they look like, SG Enable will maintain try these things out. So they contributed this, which is a very interesting little jacket. And it looks like a hoodie like any other. But if you look closely, uh, the pockets and the lining of this jacket actually have um uh, little air, air pockets inside and they can inflate and sort of give you a feeling of a hug and it's used for kids who are uh, have anxiety disorders and it, it's found to be quite uh useful and helpful in situations like that and of course there are other um uh, scenarios where this could be useful as well so that's the g-jacket let's look at what else we have here this is a good uh, little um, 3D printable that was again a collaboration between two maker spaces um, and uh, it offers up uh, a forearm attachment that is incredibly lightweight because it's 3D printable and incredibly modular because you can you know attach different uh, little pieces to it um, and as the arm grows or as the user's needs change um, it's easier to make something that is 3D printable on the spot and it's easier to modify it so that, uh, you know, it doesn't rub against the skin or it's, you know, a little bit bigger on one side or a little bit more, you know, bent this way. Um, so we find that the possibilities around uh, these kinds of uh, objects are far more conducive uh, towards the user rather than what's available in the marketplace. And they tend to be heavier and mass produced and incredibly expensive. Um, so I, we feel at Salvage Garden that uh, we don't just play the role of making these things in 3D printing. We have the responsibility to also uh, make the modifications and the changes necessary in order to um, facilitate its use. I mean, it's all very well to have as much, you know, brilliant AI enabled fancy tech in the world, but if it's not going to be usable, then what's the point of the fancy tech? So we want to try and bring 3D printable objects and 3D printing closer to the end users as much as possible. And we're not alone in this. There are other spaces that are doing it. And I think Carables is a good example of uh, who those people are. Um, one last little uh, exhibit that I'd like to point out here um, is something that is available in the marketplace, um, but incredibly useful. It's called a roll a ramp. And it is um, a commercial product. It is not particularly uh, cheap, uh, but it is incredibly useful in making spaces accessible. Um, it rolls up into a sort of like a yoga mat kind of format. And uh, since it's metal, it is quite heavy, but um, once it rolls out, you can bridge over little tiny little steps like this and uh, allow access for wheelchairs and so on. Um, and let's just have a quick look at the poster on the wall. So 
notes are on the wall is not okay. There seems to be a connection issue here. I hope I'm still coming through. I'm going to quickly reload this. But in the meanwhile, um, uh, at the end of my little talk here, I'll um, give, share the link to the main space and um, to a, a, like a little QR code as well uh, with a tiny URL that will point you to the virtual space. And I highly encourage you to come and visit and explore and on your own time. All right, looks like we're okay here. All right, one last thing I want to show you at the Makerspace is what I'm currently working on. Um, and um, it, you'll notice on this table, we've got uh, a bunch of pies. And that was my, the closest analog I could find in this virtual 2D space for the Raspberry Pi, which is the, um, uh, the, the sort of programmable pocket-sized, well, credit card-sized computer. Um, that I feel has tremendous potential. Um, and a little slice of pie on the table. And I'd like to show you that as an example here. Hopefully this will work. Yeah, here we go. And let's get rid of these here. It's very quick. It's a little uh, few slides. And I'm sure you've, uh, a lot of you are familiar with uh, this wearable device, which is the Google Glass, and it's uh, uh, quite pricey. Um, it didn't make it into the mass market, but it still is around and is being used uh, in enterprise uh, environments and is quite expensive. But um, there was an interesting article, which uh, the link is at the bottom, um, to a use case where children with disabilities, or in this case, autism, uh, could use this device as a wearable in order to assist with the activities of daily living. And it's still being explored. There are sort of very small little use case and trials where these, this is being tried out. But I, uh, personally, I feel this is an uh, excellent use case for something that didn't quite make it into the mass market. However, um, the technology behind it is um, inaccessible financially because for 999 us dollars it might be okay for an enterprise to use it but for an individual that is still quite out of reach um and uh <laughs> this little caption at the bottom right says it says surprisingly simple but if you take apart uh, one of these devices you very quickly realize that it's far from simple and there's a phenomenal amount of tech that and engineering that goes into making a device like this possible. Just to, the idea of having a screen in front of your eyes so close kind of defies the laws of physics. And um, to be able to uh, overlay a little bit of text or a little bit of information while you're able to see through it, you think. But to go whack at it and <laughs> in our um, low cost sort of DIY maker kind of way, uh, we said, look, um, let's find a low cost alternative to this and see if we can make it work. And what we have here is a device that basically auto translates. It um, has a little microphone that picks up what is being said. And you've no I'm sure everybody is familiar with this by now uh, on YouTube or other video things, you can have little or auto-generated captions. That's text, uh, that's speech to text technology. And um, having that be visible to a person who has difficulty with hearing is a good idea. And it assists with scenarios where otherwise you would be required to lip read. And now everybody's wearing masks. And, and if you have more than one person in the room, it's a bit tricky to be able to manage it all. So the use case that we were looking at is a low cost alternative to something like the Google Glass, something that can be worn, but is also lightweight and incredibly affordable. So we did manage to put something like that together. And again, you know, in, in true maker uh, open sourcey fashion, um, all of our volunteers very happily uh, made everything open and uh, uh, parametric. Uh, so this, these, um, 
are preliminary designs. Uh, it's a work very much still in process, progress, but the intention here is again, to keep it as open and as accessible and modular as possible. So uh, where we are now is we have successfully made a functional prototype of just this idea. And you can see the screen kind of sticks out very noticeably, um, but it does deliver the uh, end functionality that is required. So it's not meant to be worn all the time, but you know, like a fancy pair of glasses, you put it on for special occasions. And um, uh, you know, it, it, we're, we're, we're trying to figure out. So we've made five of these uh, in as many different colors as that 3D printer could handle. And we have five um, uh, hearing aid users who've signed up to trial this out and give us feedback on what works, what doesn't work, uh, what needs to be removed, whether or not it's, it's a stupid idea uh, uh, and things like that. But the initial feedback has been quite positive. Um, I think that um, it opens up a world of possibilities here um, for involving um, users of these devices in um, its uh, shape and uh, capabilities. So here's where we are now. Uh, we have this trial, it is ongoing, um, early, mid-Jan, we should have the outcome of uh, uh, the user feedback, and then we should be able to take it to the next level. But so far, we've managed to keep it comfortably within $99, and again, I want to reiterate that affordability is one thing, and it's only possible because of volunteers uh, not charging for their time. So the equipment itself is incredibly low cost. But if you are, have a pool of volunteers and give them access to space technology, uh, tools and equipment um, and users, I think the product that comes out of it, um, it makes good sense on multiple levels. So this is uh, the iHear prototype. Um, that's a little bit about me and my background. Um, you can explore the space and um, uh, look at this thing. Um, at your own time, but should you feel need to contact me, that's my email address. So with that, um, I'm done with this uh, space and I've given you a little walk around of our little Singapore exhibition. And before I uh, sort of uh, end, um, I'd like to point out the other things that we have here. Um, there are a couple of videos to give you a sense of what the space is like. Um, there is, here we go, this is our uh, little website and we think about the space and about what we've been doing as part of the exhibition. We'll find uh, on a little blog post uh, on this little, so um, I'm hoping that the physical space is a little bit more engaging than just reading another blog post, but you know, it helps to have it in this format as well. All right, so that um, pretty much is uh, this particular space. Um, I'm going to walk you out of Singapore and back to the international park, um, so to speak. And on the way, we'll pass by all these hundreds and thousands of laptops um, and go back to the portal that takes us to the main space. Is that not working anymore? Oh, there we go. I'm really hoping that we won't have to do these online things um, forever. Uh, I think it's the uh, moving forwards is a good idea to have a hybrid situation. And now that we're all sort of forced to get comfortable and used to doing um, remote sessions, I'm hoping that um, next year we're able to do um, a more physical CCC again. I really do miss that a lot. All right, so here we are. Um, you've had a look at Singapore. Um, you've uh, sort of have a little coming soon placeholders for uh, the other um, moving exhibitions that were done around the world in the last uh, year or so. And that was mentioned in this intro video. <clears throat> Before I end, I would like to just play this video here, um, which I think uh, captures the essence of what all of these spaces uh, and uh, what Engineering Good and Salvage Garden has been trying to do. This one is <clears throat> the Open Health Academy uh, from Be Able. 
Was ich hier super cool finde, ist, dass es nicht Profit, sondern werteorientiert ist und man tatsächlich einfach das Leben von Menschen verbessern kann. Willkommen zur Open Health Academy! Wir entwickeln in kleinen Teams Hilfsmittel und Lifehacks, die das Leben wirklich einfacher machen. Von der Idee bis zum funktionierenden Prototyp. Sven zum Beispiel fällt jetzt Fahrrad. Und macht Spaß, Sven? Ja, total. Was auch Spaß macht? Ah. Unsere Lösung, mit der jeder Rolli zum E-Roller-Rolli wird. Du musst es einfacher machen. Und wenn es dann funktioniert, machen wir es für alle zugänglich. Nachbaubar. Open Source für, für alle. alle. Außergewöhnlich, oder? <lacht> Zusammen mit Jonas, Asir, Rike, Tobi, Adina. John, Robert, Maike, Mervyn, Anastasia, Flo, Daniel, Dejan, Sven, Maggie, Lena, Thomas, Ferdi, Bea, Ian, Lisa, Raul. Und in diesen Werkstätten und Fab Labs kann wirklich jede Idee zur Realität werden. Hier ist viel Platz für außergewöhnliche Innovationen. Neben Workshops und Vorträgen kann man hier auch einfach richtig geile Sachen ausprobieren, wie ein 3D-Drucker oder Löten oder sowas. Das wird richtig cool! Es macht total Sinn, ein Produkt zu entwickeln mit der Person, die es auch benötigt. Endlich mal ein Projekt, wo du nicht überlegst, irgendwie, was soll das Ganze eigentlich, sondern einfach Sachen machen. Du hast keine Lust, Ideen für die Schublade zu entwickeln? Dann mach doch bei uns mit. Ich finde die Open Health Academy deswegen so großartig, weil sie zeigt, wie lame die Industrie ist. Das kann doch eigentlich nicht sein dass äh, Hobby-Produktentwickler sich bessere Ideen überlegen, als das, was ich in jedem Sanitätshaus finde. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your time. And um, if there are any questions, I'm happy to take them now. But, um, Otherwise, um, I hope everybody's, you know, staying safe, be healthy. Uh, um, and Gecko? Uh, yes, uh, there, there are questions. Um, so, yeah. Minutes. Very good question. And yes, that has been the biggest challenge. Um, with trying to make something new, something innovative, something that you know goes beyond what's already available. It requires hands-on interaction. And with most maker spaces, um, this continues to mean you know, it wasn't exactly easy to do this even before we went into a pandemic situation. Inviting people into a space, uh, we had different um uh barriers to entry people were shy people were not uh familiar they were not comfortable they were scared of the the, the noisy machines um and that still is the case and now to add to that we have you know uh masks and vaccinations and all of these sorts of things but um we we're still not out of the pandemic yet so we are finding ways to you know, collaborate while making the hands-on element uh, on our own. So the the idea of 3D printing and the 3D printable uh, things is no longer just uh, trapped within um, a maker space. People have these things at home. One of the most um, sort of heartening things uh, I noticed in the early days before the uh, before the vaccines were an option there was this global short shortage of PPE. And a lot of makers stepped forward and said, look, I understand how to use a 3D printer and I don't normally think about this, but what do you need? And it was being applied to social uh, intentionally or otherwise. It was there and it, and it has happened and it has happened global scale. So I feel like we have this opportunity to um, translate some of that potential and bring it forward with us. We are heading towards an area where um, 
hopefully this um, pandemic situation will be less stressful and allow for more interaction. But if we bring the lessons that we've learned while we've been in lockdown, so to speak, I think the amount that, of potential that we can realize is going to be phenomenal. That's, that's very inspiring. Thank you. Uh, then another question. Um, do you have any uh, success stories of achieving your goal of inspiring the DIY and the maker culture and then um, so that someone else could develop or uh, even just fabricate your prototype and then put it to use? Yes. Um, Carabook.org is the is the website, and I think you'll find several examples, not necessarily ones that I've made. I mean, the engineering good examples that I showed you with the switches, they are on Carabook.org as well. Um, but uh, we found, I found uh, several examples of other people's projects that were relevant to the Singapore uh, context, and bringing those into that physical space where these people interact with makers uh, and other people allowed us to have that conversation. So you just hand somebody a, a thing and they say, look, I, I understand what you're talking about now. Can you make this for me, but bigger or smaller or, you know, heart shaped um, or with a different texture? And we're now able to do that. Um, but there are examples on Carables that have inspired that kind of conversation so not necessarily an actual object um, but definitely that interaction is facilitated by looking at other people's good ideas for assistive tech um, the one that i talked about uh, with the little wearables as an e y e h e and that's what we're working on at the moment and it will be made available for any anybody to download try it out for themselves i will just throw on screen our little website where all these projects are listed and i'll point out uh this is the one so we're calling it an open source uh head mounted display and you can find out more about it over here um i hope that answers the question oh very exciting uh that that's a really good cause <laughs> thank you so much for talking about to your project and to your foundation. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Um, um, all right. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you for thank your you time for and attention. And, and we'll be back with the next talk in a bit. Talk.